Hi, in this video, I'm going to talk about the PolyU mod, TNV mod. And I'm going to give an introduction to this mod as part of a longer series on the TNV mod. So what is the TNV mod? The TNV mod stands for Three Network Viscoplastic Mod. And it's the most accurate material mod for almost any polymer. And that's a big statement. And the reason I say that is that I have done a lot of studies the last couple of years where I investigate what is the best material mod for in a rubber type materials, polyurethane type materials, thermoplastic materials. In all of these studies, almost always, the material model that is the most accurate, that matches the experimental data the most accurately, is the TNV model. So it's the model that usually is the most accurate one. And this model is a parallel network type model. And I, I created a video in which I describe the, the nature of parallel network type models. It, it has these springs and dashboards, and then you can graphically interpret that in certain ways. So I encourage you to look at that video if you haven't already. In, in the TMV model, there are two classes of networks that one can specify. One is just a spring, and one is a spring with a dashboard. So you can have any combination of these classes of networks in the TMV model. Here's just an example, kind of the easiest to, to describe as possible. In the middle, we have just a spring element. It gives sort of a straight line or a curved line, but it's mostly elastic. And then Next to it here, I have a viscoplastic network. It's a spring in a dashboard, and it has this kind of response to it. So visually, the superimposing these together gives you the overall response of a two-network TNV model, and that gives you a prediction that is somewhat suitable for a rubber-like materials. So the power here of the TNV model, and the reason why it's so good when it comes to predicting the behavior of, a, of polymers is that it has a lot of different types of networks to choose from. It selects, there are many things you can select. So in the M calibration, which is what I use to calibrate this model, the way you use it is you specify the TMV model from the list on the left, and then you can specify the individual network types for the model to the right. You can select if you want two or three elements, networks, and then you can also add failure if you like. And there are also some predefined options that are very useful. So here's a complete list as of today of the different types of networks that are available. Each network will have one out of three hyperelastic components. There's a yo hyperelastic component, a hyperfoam model for foam-like materials, and there's an anisotropic hyperelastic model that I called HGOB, it's called Sapphire Gasser Ogden, and the Bergstrom version of it. So it's a model that I developed. And that each of these hyperelastic components can have damage to it, Mullins damage specifically, and they can be temperature dependent in the TMV model, and linear temperature dependent, and also a more nonlinear uh, temperature dependent. Each of these can then also be combined with a flow element to give viscoplastic deformation capabilities. There are three types of viscoplastic flow element types, power flow, an anisotropic version of the power flow model, and another flow type they call PSC flow. Each of these can also be with linear or more nonlinear temperature dependence. In addition to this, as I mentioned, there's failure that can be activated that I'm not going to talk too much about in this particular video. And the, the difficulty that people sometimes have when they try to use this model is that there's so many choices, there's so many options. And if you have a hard time deciding what you to use, I recommend that you use one of the predefined options to the left in the M calibration material model selection dialog. That gives you a good option, a good set of parameters for that. And if you use one of the predefined material model combinations there, it also comes with better initial guesses. But you don't have to. Sometimes you want to select whatever you need specifically and then work with the calibration a little bit more, perhaps. So to summarize, the TMV model contains multiple parallel networks. It can be isotropic, can be anisotropic, it's nonlinear viscoplastic, it has yield evolution, it has damage evolution, it can have flow cessation, and the, the uh, power exponent can be evolving with plastic strain, you can have temperature dependence and failure. So all of these things that you see in the experimental test can also be captured in this model. So if you haven't tried the TMV model, I do encourage you to try that. And if you have any questions, you can ask them below.